Changing Lives Ministries. I am Sister Amanda and I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. It is my opportunity to be able to say thank you for coming to join us today. Come on in, set yourself up so that you can get the word that you need. I expect to hear about a blessing. Amen. It is my relationship. Amen. I said some some years ago and I said the tragedy of our day is that the situation is desperate but the church is not. The situation is desperate, but the church is not. And I was laying in my bed, and, I, and, and I'm going to tell you something about pastoring. And my father used to tell me this all the time, because when he was pastoring and I was what you call a Monday morning quarterback, y'all know what that is? That means after the game is over, everybody can tell you what you should have did. <laughs> Amen? And so the game was over, and I would tell him, if it had been me, I wouldn't have. If it had been me, you know, I think this, you know, and he was saying, when you get in the seat, you'll see. You know a lot because you don't have no practice. Y'all with me? You're really good at what you've never done. <laughs> Anybody walking with me? Amen. So I had all that experience, but I had never showed up for the job. Amen. Amen. So he was letting me know. He said, when you get in the seat, you're going to find out that it's not what you think it is. Okay. And so when you, when you pastor a church, what's interesting is, you know, you have to look at what's happening in the times. Okay. And if you're not careful, this is what Moses' problem was. You occur more than the people. Did y'all get what I'm saying? And, and, you know, Moses, sometimes the people get caught up in the circumstances. And Moses is trying to get the people minds over the circumstances. And, but he got so concerned about the people stressing out that they stressed them out. He stressed out because they stressed out. 
And because he let them stress him out, he missed going over to the promised land. Am I right about it? And so the, 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 the thing of pastoring, the hard part is finding that even kill where you care just enough where don't, you don't lose yourself. Are you all with me? So I was losing myself. Can I tell you, can, I, can we talk this morning? The Lord gave me, he talked to me in 10 minutes. It's going to take me uh, a little longer than that to break it down what he said. But he woke me up, and in 10 minutes he gave me this sermon, okay? Because I had some other things that I was thinking about. And he said to me, he said, Mike, he said, you, you, you know, you're tripping. Okay? You, 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 you're looking at things that are going on, and if you all listened to me uh, Thursday night, I told you what was happening. I told you how they were going to do the virus, and I told you how they were going to do the vaccine, and I told you that the vaccine had metal things in it, and that they were going to be able to, to, to notice you from the 5G towers, and that this vaccine is more than just a vaccine. Y'all remember me talking about that? If you, if, if you logged on, okay? And so, so what the Lord was telling me, he said, you, you, you're, letting this, you're letting this get to you because I'm worried about the faith of the people. Does this make sense? And so at some point, the, all this stuff you used to say, for Christ I live, and for Christ I die, you know, you're going to have to mean this at some point. At some point, the rubber hits the road. It, 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 can I tell the truth? At some point, you got to live saved for real. <laughs> is it, is, am I telling the truth? And, and, and so a lot of saints are afraid. A lot of saints are afraid. Amen? Amen? And I'm upset because I don't want you to be upset. And it's getting me more upset because I'm seeing you upset. Amen? And the Lord was talking to me this morning. He said, I want to talk to you about this. He said, because you're going to have to get yourself together. And what he told me this morning freed me. It took him 10 minutes to give me a miracle. Y'all with me? So I'm, it might take me a little longer to get it over to you, but I bet you get it. Before we get out of here, I bet you get it. Amen? Amen. So I want you to know, if you have your Bibles, I want you to go to Judges 6 and 12. Now, here's what the Lord told me. He said, how I respond to situations reveal what I think about God. That's what he told me. He said, how you respond to situations reveal what you think about me. Y'all walking with me? Now watch this. Judges 6 and 12. This is Gideon. What does it say? And the angel of the Lord. Uh-huh. Appeared unto him and said unto him, Yes. The Lord is with thee, mm -hmm. thou mighty man of valor. Now, I'm going to give you some samples because in this particular text, the Bible said the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon. And here's what the angel says. The angel speaks to him based on identity, not based on situation. Are you all hearing me? The angel speaks to Gideon based on how he was created, not what he's experiencing. And so the angel says, uh, uh, the angel said to him, the Lord is with you. You what? Mighty man of valor. And Gideon's response is what? And Gideon said unto him, uh -huh. oh, my Lord. Yes. <clears throat> if the Lord be with us, uh -huh. why then is all this befallen us? Now, 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 I want you to hear what Gideon said. The angel shows up and said, the Lord is with you. And Gideon said to the angel, it's not true. That's what he said. He said, because if the Lord is with me, why are all of these things happening to me? Huh? Are y'all listening to me? Watch this. He said, where? Read this. And where be all his miracles? Where all those miracles y'all talked about? Which read. our fathers told us of. That saying, our daddy and mothers told us about saying what? Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? Uh-huh. But now the Lord has forsaken God us. God has left me. And delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Now, I want you to get this. Because when the angel shows up, Gideon is hiding, right? He's hiding behind the wine press, right? He's hiding because he's responding to a situation. His response to the situation shows you his relationship to God. Because he's hiding because he believes circumstances are bigger than God. So he's hiding behind the wine press, and the angel shows up and tells him that God is with you. And Gideon is saying, if God was with me, I wouldn't be in this position. Amen. 
I need y'all to hear this. That my position speaks to his absence. This is what Gideon said. But the angel, when he showed up, he showed up saying, God is with you. You're not with him. <laughs> See, you, 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 your, your position has you confused on his position. And when I really begin to understand that, watch this. What I feel when I go through a test shows me how close I am to him. So if you're afraid today, your response is revealing your relationship. Because perfect love casts out what? The Bible says God has not given us the what? So whenever the spirit of fear is on me, I'm distant from him. Are y'all with me? Not only am I distant from him, it's showing that I'm having some trust issues. I'm having trust issues with God. I oh, see, you missed that. I, I know I have trust issues with you. That's understandable. But I'm having trust issues with God. And my response to my situation is showing my relationship. Watch this. And when Gideon speaks, we hear his mind. Watch this. Let's go to Mark 4 and 38. Tell your neighbor, your response is your relationship. And you really got to get this because when the Lord was working this out to me and me this morning, he was trying to get me to see that this apprehension and this angst that you're experiencing is not of me. Amen? Amen. I got the people. Come on, church. God said, I got the people. Lynn said something this morning that was really simple. She said, it, it, it comes through obedience. You will never be cursed if you can obey. If you can obey, you'll never live under a curse. But the reason we're cursed is because we got obedience issues. Amen? Now watch this. Mark, what did I say, 438? Yes. Watch this. This is about the <laughs> Jesus in the storm. Watch this. Read. And he was in the hinder part of the ship. Start at 37. And there arose a great storm uh -huh. of wind. Read. And the waves beat into the ship uh -huh. so that it was now now, I want you to listen to this because sometimes when we read the story, we don't see the context. Peter had every right to be concerned because the Bible says the waves went into the ship that the ship was full. I tell you all the time, it's one thing when the boat is in the water. It's another thing when the water is in the boat. And Peter's in the position where the water is in the boat. It ain't just the boat in the water. And so when Peter, and the Bible said not only was the water in the boat, the Bible said the boat was filled. Amen. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. Now, anybody knows anything, if the boat is filled with water, the boat can't keep floating. Amen. Okay? So the Bible said the boat is filled with water, and Peter does what? And he was in the hinder part of the ship, uh -huh. asleep on a pillar. Now, Jesus is sleeping in the bottom of the ship, and there's water in the boat. Y'all hearing me? Somebody said, this is a situation. <laughs> the water's in the boat, and Jesus is asleep, and what did Peter do? Watch this. And they awakened. Now, now, it was they, so it was more than Peter. They had a problem. And the Bible said, they awakened him, and? And say unto him, uh -huh. Master. Master. Carest thou not that we perish? Now, listen to this. The response to the situation shows their relationship to Jesus. Because when they saw themselves in trouble, they doubted his care. Are you all getting what's happening here? When they see themselves in trouble, the first thing they said was, you don't care about us. Because we think trouble means God is absent. And trouble has never been about God. Trouble has always been about you. And so his response, watch this, tells you what's going on in his mind. Do you not care that we are dying? Now Christ is asleep. Peter is up, concerned, and worried. And he's saying that my position shows your lack of interest. Are y'all hearing this? What are you in today that you feel like God doesn't care or you wouldn't be in this position? Don't get quiet on me, church. 
What are you afraid of the day that's saying to you it's bigger than the God you serve? What are you looking at? And if you really tell the truth, you're not trusting God like you're supposed to. You know he's able, but you're doubting willing. You don't know if he's coming through for you, but you heard he does. And that's what Gideon is saying. Where is this God that our fathers talked about that brought them out of Egypt? And Peter is saying here, carest thou not that I perish? Now, I'm going to show you something. These responses show their relationship to God. Because the three Hebrew boys had a situation. Didn't they have one? And the Bible said when the king uh, told them, if you hear the music, all the music that you're supposed to bow down, and if you don't bow down, we're going to kill you. Is that what the Bible says? And the Bible said that when you hear all this music, Hebrew boy, this is for the whole land. When you hear this music, you bow. And the Hebrew boys, when they played it, the Bible said they would not bow because they were used to civil disobedience. Oh, I'm going somewhere with this. I said they were used to civil disobedience. See, I got to get your mind to the point whereby it's not what the government says, it's what God said. See, I got to get you in a position that you're not listening to the government for answers, that you're listening to the God who created man, the God that created the universe. Because if you don't, you will think man has your solution. If man had the answer, we wouldn't have had the problem. Are you all getting what I'm saying? And so the Hebrew boys, the Bible that they stood up and they said to the king, we're not even careful how we answer you. The God we serve is able to deliver. Now here's what they said. We are not afraid because our relationship is right. Yeah. I want y'all to hear what they said. My relationship is right. So my, when I'm close to him, you can't fear, make me afraid. And so whenever I'm afraid, I'm distant from God. So we're not even careful how we answer these. He said, our God is more than able to do what? He's more than able to deliver. Watch this. But if he don't, I want you to hear what they said. But if he does not, that means I die as the standard. Some of y'all missed that. So that means my job here was to be a standard and even to go out that way if that's his will. So watch this. So I'd rather die as the standard than live as the compromise. Is this making any sense? And some of us, life means so much to us that we'll compromise for another day, but you're not being who God called you to be. You are called to be the standard. Are you all getting what I'm saying? And your response to threats show how close you are to God. Is this making sense? So the Lord was saying to me this morning, you can have some apprehension if you want to, but it shows you distant. So I started singing that song, Just to Be Close to You. Not girl, but I want <laughs> but just to be close to you, God. I need it because he had to check me. Are y'all getting this? He had to bring me into alignment. He had to let me know that if you're fearing, you're not, you're not serving me right. Because I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed. What? Begging bread. Somebody said, that's a promise to the believer. I said, that's a promise to the believer. Are y'all with me? So watch this. When my life matters more than his plan, I compromise. Some of us, our life matters more than God's plan. Yeah. And he said something. I want you to give me Ephesians 2 and 10 because I'm going to tell you something. You're forgetting why you're here. Most of us have forgotten why we are here. I, I, I was talking the other day. I was like, uh, you know, Lord, I mean, he just had to bring me in. I mean, he just, just stomping me. Just, 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 you know, you know, he, 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 I was talking about that. And I was like, you know. All of my life, I heard about the Antichrist. And I've heard about the Mark of the Beast. And, you know, you know I, I've heard about the, the 666. And, you know, and, and so, you know, growing up in church, you know, you know, if you grew up in this church, you know, you, 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 you know Revelations. And, when, and all my life, I'm hearing about it. And, 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 and I, I always say, let it not show up on my watch. Can, can, we, can we be honest about it? You know, let it, let it, let it catch my great, great grandchildren. I'm sorry, y'all, but it's got to hit somebody. I got, 
It's got to hit somebody. I can I be honest about it? You know, and I didn't want it to hit me. Am I right about it? And I'm looking up, and it's right here. And I'm like, you couldn't have waited. I, I'm, okay, y'all want truth, right? Y'all want truth, right? Okay, and, I'm, and, 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 and I, said, I prayed to miss this. But you can't stop prophecy. And when you're afraid, you miss mission. Now, y'all miss that. When you are afraid, you miss calls. And so the Lord took me to Ephesians 2 and 10. And what does it say? For we are his workmanship. Uh-huh. Created in You know what? I'm going to back up. Let's go to Ephesians 2 and 8. Go to 8. For by grace are ye saved. Now, I want you to hear this. For, for by grace you are saved through what? Faith. Through faith. Read. And that. Of yourself. So did you save yourself? No. Because you will never save yourself. No. You will never save yourself from trouble. No. You will never save yourself from storms. You will never save yourself from situations because there's always God that does the saving. Yes. So for by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is what? The gift of God. Now listen to this. The Bible said your salvation was a gift. Yes. Are y'all reading the Bible? Yes. It is the gift of God, what? Not of Work. You didn't earn it. There was nothing you, you can't have enough money, you can't be beautiful enough, you can't be smart enough, you, didn't, you can't matriculate from the right family. You didn't earn this salvation. It is the gift of God, it was not of works, at least what? Lest any man should boast. Because had you had something to do with it, you'd been bragging about it. Amen. You've been putting other people down because they didn't have access to it. So God said, I made the playing field even, and anybody who wants it, if you believe on me, as the scripture said, he said, watch this, out of your belly shall flow. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior, that he died, that he rose again, if you believe that narrative and you believe it to the saving of the souls, not just mental ascent. Right. This is very important because some people believe that Jesus was real, but they don't believe it to the saving of the soul. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This belief changes you. For we are not ashamed, Romans 1, 16, of the gospel of God. For it is the power. It is the power of God unto salvation. That when I believe this story, it shifts my spirit. That's right. It shifts my spirit. So watch this. Read verse 10. For we are what? Not of works, lest any man should boast. Yes. For we are his workmanship. Now I want you to hear this. We are his workmanship created what? Created in Christ Jesus. For what? Unto good works. What kind of works? Good works. What kind of works? Good works. Which good works? Which what? God hath before ordained uh -huh. that we should walk in this. Now let me tell you what this means. <coughs> let me tell you what this means. <laughs> that he saved you for a work that was for you before you ever showed up here. And so he placed you in a time period. That the work that he saved you for was to manifest in this time. Oh, this is so important. Because if I am afraid, I'll miss my work. Because you were created as solution to a problem. If I am afraid, I miss being solution and I become more of the problem. So he said, before you got saved, I already worked out your destiny. Before you got saved, he said, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans not of evil, but plans to prosper you and to bring you to an expected end. And watch this. This means that in this time period, when we are looking at the Antichrist, he said that you are the answer for this day. Why you want stuff to skip you? Why you want stuff to pass you by? Why you don't want to go through it? He said, while you're looking at all of that, you're missing how to be a help. Are yeah. oh, you all getting what I'm saying? I cannot be so afraid of what they're doing that I miss what he called me to. And we are missing the call and looking at the threat. Is this making any sense? I can't solve stuff running. And some of us, we missing solving because we're running. Yes. And God is saying, you have been placed here in this time, watch this, for this problem. 
Oh, that's powerful. You are the ones who are the precursor to the Antichrist. So watch this. The Bible talks about a great falling away. In the last day, there shall be a... And the Bible talks about the men's heart because of fear. Men's hearts begin to what? Begin to faint, begin to fail them. You know, you know why? Because people are so afraid that they forgot that they were designed to combat this. I need y'all to walk with me with it. I said, I need you to walk with me with it. Okay? So, so, so God said, my response shows my relationship. Job said something. So he said, though he slay me. Yet what? Now, now here's what Job said. Job had it wrong. But even having it wrong, he had his response right. Because God wasn't slaying Job. Satan was slaying Job. But Job said, even though I got misinformation as to the cause of it, I love the cause. I love God. I love the creator of all things. And even though I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that it's him and I'm, I'm mistaken that it's him, here's what I know. Even if he decides to hurt me, it's in my best interest. Ooh. We live all our life. Try, we, we want to avoid death. Do anything you want to, Lord, except let me die. You know, we want, we want the Hebrews boy story. We want Daniel's story. But sometimes the story is to die. Sometimes you are called to show somebody else God is real by not bowing. Yeah. Sally looking at me. Listen to me. It's a lot coming. Your job is for Christ I live and for, am I right about it? That I serve God with everything that is in me. Watch this. And I've said this other day. And I'm going to live while I'm alive. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means I'm going to have the best time of my life. Look, come on, church. And I'm not going to die till I'm dead. Are you all getting what I'm saying? So, so, so that means I'm living my best life right now. You know, Andy Christ on his way, I got two things. To be happy, he came that I might have life, life more abundantly, and to spread this gospel. That's it. I'm going to spread this gospel, and I'm going to be happy. I called Major in the office this morning. I said, you know what? Everybody's so afraid we're missing the kingdom call. So here's what we're going to do, Major. We're going to take videos of people, and we're just going to start putting on Facebook, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We're just going to shoot commercials, and we're going to pay, and we're just going to put it out. It's going to be y'all. I said, it's going to be you all. And we are going to, we're going we're gonna to proliferate Facebook, and we're going to make sure that we put out, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's why we're here. In this last days, we're going to do what we can to get that gospel out. Are you all hearing me? So what's pastor's advice to you? When you leave here today, go eat something good. Get with somebody you get along with. Don't take your enemy out to lunch. I mean, seriously, sometimes you can't enjoy your meal. The meal was good. It was the company. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right about it? Yeah. Do things that you've been talking about doing that you've been putting off. Because now it's time to do them. Yeah. I said, now it's time to do them. Okay, the Bible talks about Thessalonians. The Bible talks about the, 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 the son of perdition. He can't show up until that which remains is taken away. <laughs> What does that mean? Or, and when you look at it in the Greek, that that which remained, it was a plural statement. Watch this. It wasn't just talking about, we say the Holy Ghost, but it was talking about a group. Yeah. Oh, don't get quiet on me, church. I said it was talking about a group. Yeah. So that that which remained, the power that remained, that has, watch this, that has restrained him from coming forth. Amen. Oh, my God, I'm preaching. Yeah. That it has restrained him from coming forth. He, he said, he said and, and when that which is re re remained, when that is taken away, then he shall reveal himself. Right. So what does that mean? We on the cusp of it. I said, we're on the cusp of it. They're not just talking about the creation of what it's already in effect. So we used to sing the old song, Get Right Church. 
get right, church, and let's go home. So my thing is, I've made up in my mind, I'm going to have the best time of my life. I'm going to preach this gospel. I'm going to eat me some good food. I'm going to get this word out, and I'm going to live my life to the fullest. I'm talking to somebody. I said, I'm talking to somebody. I ain't got time to be stressing out over this little stuff. I ain't got time to listen to me. We got an eternity that we're on our way to. Is this making sense? Amen. So stop fighting over you left your shoes in the floor. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Fighting over you let you didn't wash the dishes. You didn't put this up. You ain't got time for that. You need to be loving and hugging and kissing and, and riding and eating and enjoying and you know what I mean? And talking about and going to see things and just have a good time. Man, come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say, I'm done with it. Turn around and tell somebody, I'm done with it. Come on, tell them like you mean it. Tell them, I'm done with it. When Jesus got up, what Peter and them missed was their response overlooked their power. Their response overlooked their power. Jesus got up and showed them what they should have done. Did y'all hear what I just said? He got up and showed them what they should have done. A lot of the stuff you're going through is because you won't speak to it. You sitting here letting it worry you crazy. It's running you crazy. Got your mind all frazzled. Got you all on the edge. You're biting your fingernails. And all you got to do is let the authority that is in you speak to that which is before you. That's what he did. He got up and spoke to the storm. And it had to obey. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. Here's what Job said. I love him no matter what I go through. And then Job said, when he has tried me. I shall come forth as what? Now, let me tell you what he actually said. That my surroundings must conform to my inward man. Ooh, you got to get that. That it must become what I am. Did y'all hear what I just said? When he has tried me, I shall come forth as what it was. I'm prophesying how it must end. Do you believe that God is for you? Well, we know about how you responded. How you responded. You got some tests tests and trials? What's your response to them? Because stress means no peace. If you're stressing, you're absent of peace. If you have peace, you're absent of stress. But you can't have both. I said you can't have both. And we are wasting our days messing around over nothing. Are you hearing me? Because if he don't come back and get you, you're going to die. They got to say one thing about life, says Angie, nobody gets out of here alive. <laughs> That's right. That's the facts. If he don't come back and get you in the rapture, you're going to go by the grave. Are you going to live, if you live to be 60, do you have 60 years, or do you live the same year 60 times? And what we have is people repeating last year and the year before, and you 60, but you're still living like you were 30. You haven't expanded. You're not growing. You're not adventuring out. You're not doing new things. You know, and, and, and you still haven't matured enough to tell people about Jesus. Because you're ashamed. Wow. He said, if you be ashamed of me before this sinful and adulterous generation, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. And if anybody you don't want to be ashamed, maybe it's Jesus. Are you all hearing me? Get yourself together. Stop shaking in your boots. Stop being afraid. God got you. If you understand his nature, he can't hurt you. 
He won't put any more on you than what? Hey, thank you guys so much for joining our live feed and broadcast. We do appreciate your time, but we are eager and excited that you're joining our community, our faithful community of followers and believers, people who are life changers, who are world changers. And so what we're going to ask you to do is if you have a desire to give because this message is feeding you and providing everything that you need to help you get to that next level, to present your best self, then what we're going to ask you to do is partner with us. No gift is too big or too small in the kingdom of God that is going to be utilized to reach the untaught, the unchurched, and the uncommitted. So we thank you so much for what you're doing, what you've done, and what you will continue to do as a life changer. Thank you so much. Remember, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless you. Better in the future. 